for today's meditation. I think it's healthy for us to regularly contemplate our own death, which in and of itself might not be a healthy event, but just to keep the mind primed and prepared for our eventual passing away, to prepare ourselves for the passing away of those around us, and to really give a sense of urgency or value to our lives. So relax yourself into a position which is comfortable, stable, and upright. And we can just start by thinking that you know, I am going to die. I know this. It is no secret for however many years that I've been alive, I've watched those around me also die and pass away. We think about this because, or rather we prepare ourselves for this, because oftentimes when somebody dies and moves on, we find ourselves surprised and shocked as though it was never going to happen. We think about death because it really gives meaning to every single action that we take. Because the time that we have here on earth as a human and as a Buddhist, as one who wants to cultivate wholesome qualities, well, this time is very short and limited and we think about death because we know that at some point we must let go of this existence and we don't want to cling and hold tight to our own lives our own aggregates and to our possessions and friends and family so as a means of practice to contemplate your own death, what I usually do is imagine the various scenarios in which I might die. I could be hit by a car walking to Tim's. I could have a heart attack right now. I can choke on some food, whatever it might be. What are the ways in which you might pass away? And what kind of mind do you want to have at that time? Do you want to be filled with fear and anxiety? Do you want to be concerned about your material possessions or your money? How I would like to die is with mind of acceptance, a mind of putting down, putting down the burden, and also a mind of forward determination, determined that no matter how many more lives are left, I will not stop until I have reached full liberation. And so whatever situations that we might see ourselves passing away or dying in, however we might want to feel at that time, this is our internal contemplation. A second contemplation is the external. All of those around me will also die and pass away. All of those who are close and beloved to me, all of those who currently teach us the Dhamma, when we reflect about the death of others, we prepare ourselves for the situation which will eventually come where the person whom we have laughed with and spent time with and talked with is no longer there with us. It feels like a sense of absence and also, the strings of the heart are pulled a bit. With this craving, this clinging, 
this desire to always have and be with another person, this other person in our lives is not sustainable. So when we think about others passing away, when we reflect on that frequently, it prepares the mind for a situation which is unwanted. But by reflecting, it prepares us. It, it will not surprise us when it happens. And so we may reflect upon the time we spent with that person and what we appreciated about them and what qualities they might have had. This is okay. But we do not have to put ourselves into a situation where we would be emotionally disturbed and upset and agitated. And after a time, after we have passed away and our friends and family have passed away, 100, 200 years in the future, we'll get to the point where nobody will even know our name. Nobody will know what we look like, what our voices sounded like, what our perspectives and views on the world were. We won't even be a memory. There also may come a time when the earth becomes disturbed, unleashing all kinds of earthquakes and movements of the planet, or the water will become disturbed and it will rise high and flood over the, the continents, or the planet might become too hot and fires are unleashed and burn up everything, or the wind, one wrong sneeze and the wind gets out of hand and blows everything out of its way, or the sun will expand and heat up and consume the planet that we live on, or even the sun itself is said to go through phases by which it expands and collapses. So if even these large celestial bodies, if even the planet Earth and the structures that hold it together are impermanent and, and fragile and subject to great change, then what about my own life and the lives of those around me? How stable can those really be? And so it brings a sense of awareness and appreciation and gratitude for the present conditions that we live in a time where there is an abundance of food, where everybody has shelter, and where the Dhamma can be heard and practiced. And so with these conditions, how do I use them well? How can I not get caught up by frivolous and useless activities? How can I advance myself on this path which the Buddha stumbled upon and cleared up and so we can say to ourselves I will make use of these conditions because another situation like this might not happen for a long time we can now bring the meditation to a close and consider all of those whom are our relatives from the past whom we don't know, at least in this present life, but who have been our relatives in some distant past. We can think about our friends, family, our loved ones, who in this present life have passed on. And we consider them, we invite them, we encourage them to come and rejoice and make merit or reflect upon, make use of our wholesome conduct. Let us all recite together. Idang me nyati nang 
ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo idang no nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo idang wo nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo etta vata cha am he hi Sampadangpunya sampadang sabbe satta anumodandu sabba sampati siddhiya. And lastly, let us make an aspiration for Nibbana so that at some point we no longer have to pass away and die anymore. Please repeat after me. Idang me punyang asawakaya wahang ho tu. Idang me punyang nipanasa pachayo ho tu.